Bitcoin should be understood by many people here. So if people need to understand Bitcoin, it will need to be usable. They need to, I mean, uh, use it in their daily life, like buying uh, bread with it, like buying data with it. Uh, so that's the real point. I'm not winning anything doing in that because uh, anyone paying, don't pay me anything for, for, for the work. So just in code of my passion, since I discovered Bitcoin, I will become every day more passionate and try uh, my best to, to let more people enter in it. All right, everybody. Welcome back. We are here today with the one and only Loic Kasamoto, um, who is based in Benin, our first guest from Benin, which is super exciting. Um, Loic is a Renaissance man, wears many hats, like many of our guests, like many, many, the, many of the Renaissance men and women that we have on this podcast. Um, so Benin is based in West Africa. Um, in Benin, uh, Loic works as a UX, UI developer. He also educates people about Bitcoin. Um, from what I understand and what I read, Loic, please correct me if I'm wrong, you also put on a conference called Bitcoin Mastermind or BTC Mastermind. Yeah, be. Sure. Excellent. Uh, he was the first person to run a node in Benin, which I think is a very cool thing. He advertises that on his X page or his X profile. Um, he does many things. He writes articles um, and he does this all, which is really amazing uh, in both, well, predominantly in French, but in English and in French. Um, I was a former language professor, so I'm always amazed by people who have such fluidity going between different languages the way that you do. And um, yeah, so let me hand it over from there. Please uh, fill in any gaps, let the audience know what I might have missed there and tell us a bit about yourself. Okay, thank you, Frank. Uh, I want to say, uh, really thank you and I'm full of beans being on your podcast today. Uh, I'm Loic, Loic Casamoro. Casamoro is just a tribute I'm paying to Satoshi Nakamoro for creating Bitcoin. Mm. Uh, so my real name is Loic Casa. So I just play with words with my name. So um Bitcoiner uh, since uh, let's say five years and been in and trying to, I mean, orange peel more people through many activities and many other stuff like developing solution to let people buy Bitcoin. I think we're gonna come across all of this. So uh, that's all, that's all, let's say that is. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Um, so I just wanted to let you know that English is not our official language here. So uh, I'm going in English uh, by learning it by myself. So I'm not so fluent as native speaker, but I think we can go. <laughs> Perfect. Nice. So I want to uh, touch on something you just said there and tie it into another question that I had. So you said you're trying to orange pill as many people as possible. Um, yeah. So I want to sort of combine that with why, why is Bitcoin helpful to the people of Benin? So if you could give us a little bit of a, a backdrop, an economic backdrop on what things look like in the country, um, you can go into even the history a little bit. Um, you can hold off on maybe talking about, or if you want to, you can get into the CFA Franca. I have another question about that, but please just give us an idea of why Bitcoin would be useful to the people of Benin. Okay. Thank you for the question. Uh, I think uh, everyone here today have to know that uh, Benin is West African country. We are near Nigeria, not far from. We share the same border uh, at the way and not far from Togo, Niger and Burkina. And so uh, we are a French speaking country and we use uh, SOF, that is France CFA. There is two France CFA in Africa, the South one and the South one. We here in Benin, we use SOF, that's West African CFA. The Cameroonians like, I mean, who do I know in Cameroon? I think I know Bitcoin Surface. Uh, they are used ZAF, that is, uh, uh, I mean, Central Africa, France CFA. Okay, that's, that, that's the meaning. So uh, in Africa, there is eight country using SOF, that is France CFA. It is Benin, uh, Burkina Faso, uh, Mali, 
Senegal, Niger, Togo, and Guinea-Bissau. And I do forget uh, Ivory Coast. We are the country who use France CFR here. And the main thing we have to know about it is that uh, we are not the country who printing this money. Money comes from France. So France CFR is printing from uh, French Treasury. And this is, I mean, a big problem we need to solve. As we are going to use money, at least we need to be printing it by ourselves. But it's come from France. This is a big problem. And Bitcoin comes like, I mean, a solution for this problem. So that's uh, what I'm, uh, I'm doing my best to, I mean, introduce many people to Bitcoin to let them and understand what is the real economic situation in our country. You know, we are facing many troubles, but people uh, will not ever be agree with that. Uh, it's like they don't know the problem are there. If not, you tell you telling the problem to them, they will be like, no, 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 I'm not facing this problem. You know, so can, can, that's that's a great point. And I, I actually spoke about this with um, the Bitcoin Sophist, as you mentioned in Cameroon. Um, we had him on a few uh, episodes ago. The something that I've noticed is that money is a very difficult thing to understand. And when most people think about money, they think about the way it's distributed, meaning do I want to live in a capitalist or market economy, more of a communist economy? And that comes down to the distribution of money, right? So who gets what, how, how high are taxes, who's in charge of the distribution of money, all of this stuff. Those are questions that are very difficult to answer and they vary from person to person who wants what done with their money and, and whatever. But the, the question with Bitcoin is one that regards the nature of money and that's different than the distribution of money. So when you're work, when you're talking with people, I'm curious, what is it like to try to educate them? Certain people, even here, so we, I live in New York City, it's very difficult to talk with people about the nature of it because it's such an abstract concept on certain levels that yeah. it's difficult to figure out sort of what someone's framework is and then how to approach it and to explain what this thing is, what Bitcoin is and how it solves this problem. So what has your experience been like in approaching that situation? Uh, I think uh, here uh, people don't really understand what is Bitcoin. Uh, there are many crypto guys in Benin. Uh, they are just interested in make uh, some profit by buying maybe some cryptos. And at the end, they just get out with the profit and uh, make life. And uh, the, the real problem is you need to figure, uh, figure out what people are going through and then present to these people, how Bitcoin can help them. Like uh, here, I'm working with my team to uh, let many restaurants accept Bitcoin. So I have to uh, show this restaurant how Bitcoin is helpful to them. Like if they, uh, they accept Bitcoin today, what be the benefit for them? Uh, they are clear, open to new markets. Uh, we, we call something, I do forget the name, uh, the word that to describe it. Uh, I think, how do we call it in English? In, infla inflation, sure, that's it. So inflation exists here, but people don't know really about it. Uh, people don't understand what is it. Here in Benin, for example, you can meet people who tell you that uh, five years ago, we used maybe uh, 100 soft to buy bread, but today, we need to use more. And they will tell you that bread uh, become maybe more expensive, but not. It's just our money that lose value. So you have to let people understand that. And this is the way you can, I mean, touch every people uh, with the problem they are facing and let them know that how Bitcoin can be, uh, I mean, solution for them. Understood. That makes a lot of sense. Um... Another thing that comes to mind when you take on this role of showing a restaurant how to do something or this or that, 
I, I imagine that a lot of this work to some degree is unpaid. So it takes a lot of personal effort and brain, you know, brain power from you, emotional power, because I'm sure it's not like you just show people something once and then they're like, oh, I got it. Perfect. No questions. They always have questions. So then you become the point person. So how do you deal with that? It's a lot of work and a lot of sharing information for not a lot of reimbursement, at least up front. So what is your sort of strategy there? I won't lie. It's so it's so difficult for me to to kind of all of this thing. Uh, that's what that's why I'm working with a team. Uh, we are two in the team. Mm. Uh, Alphonse, I think you're gonna see him on Twitter, or uh, maybe you met him at Bitcoin Conf at, at Ghana, and Samalu, uh, who is the third one. So uh, three together, uh, we're trying to to I mean help people understand what is it. And if they get questions, if I'm not available, Alphonse will be available to, to give them answers. Or uh, the third one will be available to get them, to give the answer. Apart from that, uh, all restaurants we help to accept Bitcoin. We have meeting with them. Uh, I mean, at least three months after to check how things going mm. and get a question, give the give them answers and try to help them. I mean, manage the the wallet and so and so and so on okay um it's great that you have a team and everything else but I'm, again i'm sort of curious is there any sort of financial reimbursement for you in doing this sort of process or is it just simply because you're looking to spread knowledge and information about bitcoin uh sure i i i'm in the process like uh bitcoin should be understood by many people here so if people need to understand bitcoin it need to be usable. They need right. to, I mean, uh, use it in their daily life, like right. buying uh, bread with it, like buying data with it. Uh, so that's the real point. I'm not winning anything doing in that because uh, any, anyone paying, don't pay me anything for, for, for the work. Mm. So just because of my passion, since I discovered Bitcoin, I will become every day more passionate and try uh, my best to, to let more people enter in it. Okay. No, I appreciate that. I th the only reason I ask is because I think there's a lot of people in this space that do a lot of work and they don't get paid for it. And sometimes it's underappreciated and, you know, we all need to eat. We need to buy bread. <laughs> so, you know, I, I'm always curious as to how people sustain themselves when they do spend so much of their time you know, trying to explain this to people without charging for it or anything else. But I do think that that's important. So, I mean, I do think it's obviously important to educate people. Is there any sort of semblance of like a circular economy developing in Benin, like what we see in Bitcoin Beach or Bitcoin Nakasi or Bitcoin Kampala, places where people are sort of, even on a smaller level, maybe a few stores or some people are using Bitcoin amongst themselves as a currency? Uh, I won't say is look like Bitcoin Ikazi or, or other thing also, uh, but sure there is, there is, I think there is right now a free restaurant in Benin that accept yeah. Bitcoin and others people that accept Bitcoin through, uh, I mean, uh, online services. Uh, we have here people selling, uh, computers, they are selling Bitcoin, uh, through their website. We, we have them doing that and uh, it's possible like buying data with bitcoin here so it is a bitcoin circular economy growing yep. and i think maybe at the end of this year we plan to like orange peel uh, on board like 12 at least uh, to 12 restaurants accepting bitcoin so that will be amazing and make the list be growing so that that's the the plan we, we are making uh, for this part like uh helping bitcoin uh help people accept bitcoin and we have other plans uh maybe we go come across uh all of these plans uh, when we go in discussion again cool um that's 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 great to hear um, I, another question uh this is something i've heard from a bunch of people um is that uh bitcoin adoption rates are actually lower in francophone speaking countries in africa versus english speaking countries or francophone countries versus english speaking countries so french speaking versus english um why do you think this is the case do you think it's a language barrier where most of the materials are in english or is there something more broadly happening here Sure, that is the first point. I think there's a language barrier because uh, 
any stuff you you I mean uh meet in the in the Bitcoin space will be in English. If you're going on Twitter right now and, and try to find something about Bitcoin, sure you will find more more people talking about it in English and same thing on YouTube, same thing on any platform else, and many materials to educate people still in be in English. And now right now we here uh, trying to translate some some materials in French or trying to create some materials in French to let more people enter. And also in French speaking country, you can notice that people are not really open minded like they are in English English countries. So mm. that's also another point. People here are more uh, like we don't need new thing. Things that's already work, let's do with it. Interesting. Do you think that? So that's a mentality. What? Why is that mentality there? I'm curious. And what does it have to do with language? Yeah. Exactly. Mentality, language, stuff, barriers. Uh, that's the real point that uh, lets people in French-speaking country uh, being, I mean, back. Uh, from those who speak English. And on this point, we hear uh, like trying to uh, host like Bitcoin events, uh, as you were saying at the, at the beginning, that yep. we call Bitcoin Mastermind. Uh, we host it every year for three days, like Afro Bitcoin Conf. And uh, we started before Afro Bitcoin Conf, we started since 2021. Mm. And people who speak French can come from Togo. Uh, from Burkina Faso, from Benin, and from other country, the only uh, limit is that they need to speak French because we don't uh, do the conference uh, in English. So that's uh, a way we find to make the things more growing here also. That's amazing. That's really cool. Um, yeah, I'm, gl I'm glad to hear that because it's. Uh, I, I definitely have a blind spot as someone who's a native English speaker to the amount of material where, I, where you, know, you point someone and just say, go read this or go read that. Um, and just the fact that these things are not really translated into a lot of other languages, a lot of the materials, it's, uh, it's definitely a disadvantage for people who don't speak English for sure. So the work you do is, inc is incredibly important. I want to go back to the CFA Franc. So I, I've heard people pronounce this differently. Um, I want to go back just to give you so that you can maybe give the audience a bit of an overview of what it is. So what is the CFA Franc? So I'll, I'll leave it there, but also um, include. Um, I'm curious, like are people's. As you talk about it, if you could touch on are pe people in countries that use CFA Franc, the money are they starting to recognize that maybe France shouldn't be controlling their money? And even if they don't agree with Bitcoin, do they think more along the lines of at least like Benin should be in charge of its own money? Sure, I, I do think people, more people coming across and really uh, noticing that uh, the money is not, France CFA uh, is not controlled by, by Benin, but by France. And more people are not agree with that they want at least to to let benin uh, control his own his own money but i think they do not understand the history behind all of these things uh, they have to know that like before france starting controlling our money we signed some papers we we accept it so it cannot be uh i mean changed uh, so easily like that we need okay. to, to follow a process and make some many, I mean, uh, many things before it be done. So uh, many people have first, uh, how do we say it? Uh, so, sorry, yeah, my, my English is not so, so No, it's so great. It's excellent. I need to, I need to thank for so, some words before pronouncing them. So That's like, okay. frustrate, frustrated we, about uh, the situation and want to, want to, to change. And among those people, uh, there are many that studying, understanding and Bitcoin and find it as solution as, uh, uh, how, how do we say? <laughs> so sorry, so sorry. No, for, it's great. You're for, doing great. Yeah. <laughs> and so uh, I was saying uh, many people are frustrated by situation and wanted to be changed. So uh, for those who 
come across Bitcoin, they uh, decided to maybe understand what is it and how they can use it but to send money to, uh, I mean, the parent or other people. Because uh, we, we have to know that many of African are uh, in, I mean, Europe and yeah. have to send money to, to the people in Africa. And using the, the fiat system, uh, don't allow them to, to send what they want to send. Like they send maybe uh, $1,000 and people here will not never get this amount. Uh, this is a problem. And they, they are looking for solution. They are looking for uh, an alternative. And then when they discover Bitcoin, uh, maybe they, they need to learn more about it before starting using it. Or maybe some uh, just decided to use it like an alternative without knowing about it. And this has, this has some point that we, we're still uh, working on to let more people understand what is it, how to use it, and uh, how to manage it uh, as so easy as possible. Okay. Um, what I've noticed lately, especially with high fees on the Bitcoin base chain, is that it's very difficult to teach someone who's new to Bitcoin to use a non-custodial Lightning wallet. So a wallet, um, Lightning for people who don't know, it's the payments layer on top of the Bitcoin network. So a layer two built on top of Bitcoin. But to get money onto Lightning, um, to at least in a non-custodial wallet, a wallet to which you own the keys to the Bitcoin, it's a little bit challenging because fees on the base layer of Bitcoin are quite hard. So what are you doing right now to sort of get people to work around that? Are you recommending custodial Lightning wallets like Blink or Wallet of Satoshi? Or are you just saying, look, it's going to hurt a little bit, but you're going to have to do this one base chain transaction to open up a node in something like Phoenix Wallet or open up a channel? Um, what is what has your what has your strategy been given the current high fee situation on Bitcoin? Uh, we're going step by step. Uh, firstly, uh, we just introduce people to custodial wallet they have to use like Wallet of Satoshi or Blink that is doing a good job since a while. And uh, when we notice people really understand it, uh, we're trying to let them go into a uh, non custodial wallet right now, like Phoenix, as we were saying. But at this stage, let's say more people using custodial wallets like uh, a Blink or Wallet of Satoshi. And we here also hosted a solution we call Flash. Flash is a solution that let people buy in Bitcoin. Uh, I mean, uh, with the amount they want, like they can buy uh, one uh, hundred francs CFA uh, Bitcoin. So easy as possible. And we use LN, uh, I mean, Lightning, Lightning Network to let people buy this, uh, I mean, penny. And that's, it, that's the way we, we pronounce it in English. I do. Okay. That's correct. That, say, can you repeat the words? Uh, yeah. Sure. Uh, I was saying that we, we just let people buy, I mean, uh, a few amount of uh, of dollars, like penny. Pennies. Yeah, 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 that's correct. That's what I thought you said. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. So very, very small amount. So could you, I actually wanted to ask you about this. So Flash is something, is it, is it something that you actually developed? Did you develop the UX or UI for it? Sure, sure. It's can, something we develop here with my team, uh, cool. like I was saying. And it is online. People can buy. But just people from Africa, like uh, Benin, Togo, and I think people from Côte d'Ivoire also can use it. Not everyone, because we are not, uh, we do not have all local payment uh, established on the platform. But we still working to let more, uh, more countries from Africa uh, entering it by introducing the, the uh, local currency on, on the website. But it's already working, and people in Benin use it to buy Bitcoin when they want, uh, uh, as they want, for the amount they want. Uh, and like, you know, uh, you, we, we do not need to pay uh, higher fees to transact through LN. So it really uh, makes the, the work so easier for us and for people that's great so is it like uh could i compare it to maybe azteco would it be something like that uh compared to what do you know azteco a a z t e c o uh, uh yeah yeah i know azteco yeah no 
is a little bit different. It's a little okay. bit different. Okay. It's like uh, an exchange, but not an exchange. People have just to buy Bitcoin from there or selling their Bitcoin, but uh, not by the same way they're using another exchange like, I mean, Binance or all. There is no other product uh, uh, apart from Bitcoin, just Bitcoin okay. and Bitcoin Lightning. That's the only way we transact. So with, it's uh, big. It's a Bitcoin. It's a Bitcoin only, Lightning only exchange. Sure, exactly. Like and this. and pe people can transfer small amounts of their their money, their fiat currency, to buy sure. Bitcoin on Lightning. So they would have to already have a Lightning wallet set up. Like if it was if it were non custodial to use something like this, they wouldn't be able to. Okay, that that's a uh, that's super interesting. That's awesome. I had I have not. I feel like I'm just starting to hear a little bit more about like Bitcoin only, I'm sorry, lightning only Bitcoin ATMs and things like this, where you're just getting the money on lightning. And I think there's going to, we're going to need more of that, especially because I don't think the ordinals and the high fees are going away anytime soon. Um, so we're going to need ways where people don't lose a chunk of their initial investment, just trying to get money off of the base chain or onto the base chain. They're just going to have to need to use it on lightning. So that's amazing that you're developing a solution for that. You're, you're a, no, my pleasure. You're, you're a software developer by trade and, and that's your training, right? I know I'm, I'm US, uh, UX. Oh, sorry. Designer. You, yes, UX UI. So how did you actually create, I, you know, I'm, I'm always fascinated by this. So how did you actually create an exchange? That seems like a very intensive job to do. That's a very difficult thing to accomplish. Well, as, as, as I was saying, we were three in the team. So uh, two others are developers. Uh, mm. So they got the knowledge how to develop the website. And that the way I just, they, I'm just the one who designing the website and then they will develop it. And that's how we, we, we have developed the, the solution and still maintaining it. Uh, by working on it uh, every day uh, to let more people use it as easily as possible. Because, you know, uh, if we get more people on the website at the same time, we can have some crush, we can have some bug, and we do, we do need to fix it. And so uh, this takes a lot of time because uh, uh, my guys are, are not maybe available at every time. And yeah. we need to wait maybe everyone meet before starting to fix the, the, the problem. And this takes maybe uh, a lot of time for us. But we still improve the, the website to let more people use it at the same time and not get any burgers. So. Cool. That's th what you're saying is super. It's a super important part to this process. A lot of people who are relatively sort of starting out, trying to make their mark or create their own thing, whether it's uh, educational materials or or what I'm doing with a podcast or creating software, it takes a while to get started. And there's a lot of work working out the different bugs, working out the difficulties. It's a lot of work behind the scenes that I don't think a lot of people are aware of. But I'm curious, you know, with everything that you're working on, where do you feel like you've gained the most traction, which means like, where have you had the most success so far? And, you know, what, what, what has sort of, uh, what has worked and, and how has that motivated to, how has that motivated you to sort of keep you moving forward? Uh, I, I think, uh, for all solution, we, we, we trying to build, we so uh, happy for all of that, like Bitcoin mastermind, that is the event, uh, at the first, uh, hosting, we have more than, uh, 100 people who were there. And that was so amazing to see two more people at our first Bitcoin event in Benin. Uh, that bring uh, bring all people from French speaking country together. So this is things like uh, make us really happy and let us know that there is more to do. We can, I mean, reach more people. So we will uh, try to improve the conference for the next year. And for the next year, we have more than 100 persons uh, attend the conference too. And that let us be uh, so grateful for the experience. Yeah. And we decided to repeat it uh, every year. But like last year, we were not able to host the event because in Benin, there was uh, a bit difficult situation that uh, helped, uh, I mean, uh, last year. Uh, about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, our government decided to like uh, impeach everyone to, I mean, 
talk about Bitcoin if you uh, advertise about it or talk about it anywhere you probably gonna have problems so uh, we cause of that people were like fear of what can be uh, gone on if we were on the conference and we decided to to not do it last year but uh, things is more uh, cool right now and we think this year uh, we're going to uh, host the, the the third edition for for the event uh, in Benin and we we really hope uh, gonna have more people uh, than last two years and gonna have uh, more speakers uh, like we met more people at Afro Bitcoin Conf that speak French and we talk them about Bitcoin Conf uh, I mean Bitcoin Mastermind that we host in Benin and we finger cross hoping they will be there uh, to support us cool. and to let us know uh, what you are doing as job. For Flash, for example, uh, this is really, really difficult because we do not make money with the solution. We do not make money, but... We you don't charge... See... There's no fee or anything like that for the for the procedure? Well, sure, there is fees, like uh, 1 to 2% uh, for fees, but uh as we still doing work as we still maintaining the website online uh, anything also about all of this uh take all of this uh, i mean money we make uh to let maintain the solution live so at the end we do not make money uh we flash we flash but uh when we 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 i mean come across all transactions we see on the website it uh, give us more uh, more faith for what can be in the future because yep. many people using it like every day we can have at least uh, 50 transactions just from people from Benin 50 wow. at least and sometimes we facing a problem like liquidity problems we do not have maybe uh, Bitcoin to give to people uh, when they send us uh, fiat uh, we do not have fear to send them where they send us Bitcoin. So this is a big problem we are facing right now with Flash and we're trying to fix it. As we were at uh, Afro Bitcoin Conf, we met uh, uh, Costato, the one who built uh, Machankura. Mm -hmm. And we talk a lot. He gives us uh, really interesting, uh, I mean, resources to, to use to improve the services. And we still learning we still studying all these uh resources we give to us to try to to make balance between things and to let the the, the website work uh, automatically as possible yeah so that, that's the way uh we are going through to all these solutions we are building right now yeah that's he's he's unbelievable kg for much he was on the podcast a few episodes ago and um, I'm amazed at not only how intelligent he is, but how willing he is to uh, share his information and to help other people. Um, what I want people to take away, uh, people listening to this, is there's people like Loic, like, <laughs> like I, I've, I've said this a few times already in this conversation, but they're doing a lot of work for not a lot of money. There's not a lot of reimbursement at these points. We hope that, you know, things pop off and, you know, something that you're working on makes you plenty of money and you, you know, all that stuff. But, you know, it's really important that, you know, we support these people, we support each other um, because this stuff is not easy, you know, and, and on top of that, you just pointed out a lot of this stuff can be torn down very easily when a government starts instilling fear, like you can't use this or whatever. And that can be very, very disheartening because I'm going to quote something that KG said. He said, I don't know why, you know, I don't know why you guys worry about Elizabeth Warren and Gary Gensler and whatever, and all these people so much. He's like, if they, if they don't like Bitcoin, they should offer something better. They should bring a better product to market. I agree philosophically, but in practice, we know that people who hold power, can very easily stop things that potentially take some of their power away. And so we're, I think all of us in this space are constantly dealing with this tension of, well, what if the powers that be just decide to get very, very aggressive in trying to stop this? 
And it would be very, very disheartening, of course. Um, but I think the lesson to be learned here, what Loic is saying today, what people like Loic are doing, we're, we're you know, building despite the fear, right? Doing something hopefully from, from a place of hope and positivity versus a place of, oh, no, we shouldn't do this. We should just accept the old way that things work or, or things yeah. don't work because of, because we're afraid. So I think that that's a really big takeaway today for whoever's listening. A lot of people in this space are doing this, knowing how much they could possibly lose at the snap of someone's fingers. And uh, they're doing it anyway, because they believe in it. Um, so I commend you for that. I'm sorry about that rant. But I think it's important people understand this sort of uh, d dynamic of what you do. Um, I'm curious, what, what did change with the government? Why did they change their stance or why is, why are things now a little bit more cool? Uh, before, uh, they, I mean, uh, say we, we, we are not allowed to, I mean, uh, talk about Bitcoin anymore. There were many scams that just use crypto to, to scam people, Got uh, it. like give uh, away more than millions of front CFR here. Uh, people invest in business thinking they are they are investing in crypto of investing in Bitcoin, you know, and so those people are just uh, using Bitcoin to give uh, money money away from from the others, and that was the starting of the problem. And Got it. The government decided to to protect, I mean, users to protect, uh, I mean, the population. That's why they they take like uh, uh, they take like we need to stop people doing that so if anyone talk about bitcoin or crypto at anywhere we're going to arrest them and uh, the person will be in charge of all things that uh, we hear about him and things like that so that is really to make people fear and to uh, i mean stop people uh, scamming uh, each others uh, that was why uh, okay. They decided to, to, to do things like that. But uh, since a while, uh, it's looked like the government is more uh, open to understand what is Bitcoin and how it can help people. So they launched an event that, that was about cryptocurrencies and invite many people from uh, university tutors to students uh, to talk about Bitcoin. And after that, I was also invited on the national TV uh, show to talk about Bitcoin. So that was uh, the, the thing that was things that uh, help us uh, right now uh, be uh, come on, on, on the situation more cool than it was uh, last year. Okay, that's amazing. Congratulations. And I think what you seem to be getting at is differentiating between Bitcoin and crypto, which I think is really, really important. Um, you know, I, I, I understand the, um, I understand the meme, the uh, Bitcoin is not crypto, but I think it's technically wrong. It is. And we sort of have to differentiate as a result of that, meaning you can buy Bitcoin on the same exchange like Binance that you can buy every other crypto asset on. So you have to sort of acknowledge that Bitcoin is crypto, but it's a different entity within that space, that it's something completely different, that it's the only one that is actual money, all of this sort of stuff. So I think that there's a lot of education to be done. And I think some of the challenge sometimes is when you're in this space, when you're very deep in it, you you think that everybody already understands this, but then you realize that many people do not understand this. So you, yeah, you have to sort of go back to basics. Um, is there anything else you want to add about what you're working on? Any message you want to send to the audience? Any sort of thoughts that you want to share? Um, you know. Uh, I just want to say thank you for uh, inviting me on your podcast is uh, a good experience for me. I, I think you are the first one inviting me on an English podcast. So mm. that's, yeah, uh, I was like going to French podcasts since a while, uh, like how to Bitcoin FR and those, uh, I'm not going to maybe list right now. So thank you for doing that. And Pleasure. I want to say, uh, uh, we need here in Benin, uh, like, uh, more support from French speaking country, uh, to, uh, I mean, 
produce some content in French that can let people understand really what is Bitcoin. Because if people here in French speaking country needs to uh, go in searching information in English, it will be really difficult for them to enter uh, in the uh, Bitcoin space. And that is a thing that we are going to try to work uh, about. And we get a support from uh, Dekouf Bitcoin. I don't know if you, you hear about him. Dekouf no. Bitcoin. No, no, please tell oh. us. Yeah. Uh, Dekouf Bitcoin is, a, I mean, he's doing a great, great, great job from French, French country. Uh, he's from France and help uh, El Salvador uh, to, I mean, train people about Bitcoin and how to accept it. And add, I think last year, uh, they work with the government from Salvador to teach uh, more people about development on Bitcoin. So we are discussing with them since a while to get some materials they, they use in French and that we can also use here to let more people understand what is Bitcoin as easily as possible. So yeah. I want to shout out to him for the job. And that's the point. <laughs> that's all. <laughs> amazing. Amazing. Well, thank you for being our first guest from Benin. Thank you for doing this in English. Um, you know, I think sometimes we, we really, English, native English speakers take for granted how much content we have and everything else. And I think that you offered some really good perspective on um, and in a way, how lucky we are, how privileged we are to have so much of this content originally written in English. I think the work you do is amazing. Um, I think your voice, I'm glad to have it be a part of the conversation in English so people can um, hear what you're doing. Um, if by chance you're listening to this and you also speak French, either reach out to me um, or reach out to Loic to, uh, you know, let him know if you want to help translate materials, contribute in some way. Um and yeah, that and that that as a final message, you know, people like Loic, people, the people, most of the people I interview on this podcast, they could always use some level of support, you know, even if it's a pat on the back. There's a, they're doing a lot of work. They're doing it for not a lot of money. It comes from a good place, uh, from their heart. It's uh, it's very passion driven. Um, and uh, in whatever ways you could sort of raise their voices up or give them a hand, please do so. I think you'll find it rewarding. Um, and yeah. I'm going to leave it at that. Loic, thank you for joining us today. You are a super cool guy. I'm super happy that we got to meet in person. I hope that it happens again this year somewhere else on the continent in Africa. Um, I hope to one day, I'm going to have to work on my French if I try to ever attend your conference, but I would love to see this firsthand, what you're doing. Um, but yeah, I'm amazed by what you're doing. Please keep up all the amazing work and we will talk soon. Hope so. Thank you, Frank. And let's say, see you soon. Sounds good. All right. Take, take it easy. We'll talk soon, everybody.